No, it's very true. And you say you launched last year in February. Am yep. I right in saying? Yep. Yeah. So, so how was the journey from, you know, you starting out to saying, okay, we're going to start Roadmap MBA. Could you talk about that journey there? Okay. So um, I was born and raised in Liverpool, single parent, went to uni and I started my career in construction. And I won't go through the whole kind of thing. But anyway, when I kind of finished my PhD, well, actually, no, when I was doing my PhD, I was on a scholarship of £13,300 a year which I'd come from working overseas in Jamaica on a really good job and a big $100 million kind of project. Global recession hit in 2008, came back to England to do a PhD and actually win a girl back who's in Sheffield, who's now my wife, which is <laughs> quite cool. But anyway, but it was at that point I started my own, my first business and it was actually a photography business. And that's where I learned all about cameras and lighting. So part of the reason why I know how to do all of this, I've been doing it a long time. And anyway, so fast forward through when I then moved up to the Northeast after I'd finished and then got my first job and basically worked my way up through different companies. Luckily, I am quite good at learning stuff, but I had to learn everything from scratch the hard way, reading hundreds of books, having lots of different jobs, having good, some good ones, some bad ones, see what works, but actually like in practice, what actually works. So I remember one of the techniques in the book I learned in the back of a taxi in Dubai, we we're going to see a big client there, but the point is I've kind of been there and done it. And over kind of quite a few years, what I'd actually started to do, and I'm not even sure why, I started to compile all the ideas and concepts into a Microsoft Word document. And basically that then developed into the very rough draft of the first book, which was called the Growth Strategy Roadmap, which was kind of similar to this, but not as good, you know. And then um, I had lots of different jobs. I went through my last paid job was uh, head of strategy and marketing for a PLC energy firm, helped them float on the stock market. It was a good job, but I hated the people. And then when I decided to leave there, it was either set up on my own, and this was September, October 19, or I, I was offered more jobs and I decided to kind of go for it. And then, um, yeah, so I, I set up as freelance contractor. So basically people hire me to do stuff. And that was in October. And it was kind of over the next kind of three, four months, I started to write up you know, just into slightly more detail, but nothing special. And it was when lockdown happened, um, I think it was the April of 2020. And, you know, basically everyone went onto Zoom and I realized the potential for online education because although this is forced due to a pandemic, you, we all know that in the next 10, 15, 20 years, it's going to happen more and more and more. So at that point, I already knew how to use uh, Adobe InDesign and lots of different things. and basically started to draft it up into an actual book and a course and do the business plan and kind of do it. And then the trick is always, uh, it's like the lean startup principle of launch, get the minimum viable product out there, get the feedback, see what works, see what doesn't work. And then from February 21 to November, uh, I've run through the course once or twice with different, you know, groups of people. So it was just multiple kind of iterations. And that was really useful actually, because you're getting consumer feedback from people that maybe didn't go to uni or they have different, so you're getting different viewpoints, which make you think, well, actually, I didn't think of that. It's really good. So then come like June or so, it started to do quite well. And a lot of my money was coming in from the consultancy stuff. The, what I'd done to launch the minimum viable product, which was version one, it was fine. Like it was in a quite a nice box. I knew exactly what I wanted to do, a nice user experience, but it wasn't well class in the way that I knew for the ambitions that I have for the business and where I want to go with it. That if you're genuinely aiming there, you have to put the time and the effort into create the brand and everything that goes with it at that level. So for instance, um, it's the classic conundrum when you start to earn revenue or money, you can either someone I used to work, uh, live with had his dad who had a, a chain of business in the Middle East used to say it's expensive to be cheap. And I could have gone for a much cheaper provider and a cheaper brand, or I knew I could pay five times as much, but go with the company, which will get me to there. So rather than invest a little bit and just be an average, and I had certain companies in mind who I then went out and bought, but it was almost, it was the difficult decision of, do you play it safe or do you spend the money and just kind of live the lifestyle? And what I've really done over the past kind of two years, and even now, like I'm, I'm doing good money every month and I'm doing quite well, but in the past kind of 10 months, I've paid myself less than minimum wage because all my money goes back into the business because I know where I'm trying to kind of get it to. And then what's been really interesting is that when for the whole of version one and probably for the first 10 months, 
I'd send out free courses, I'd do what I'm doing, and people would start to see it, but nobody really cared. It's that balance of, yeah, they've probably seen what Steve's doing, but meh. But with version two and the fact that, especially with the live streaming every week and the quality is hopefully quite good, it's now at a point where people are interested. And it's it's just evolved. But the point is, it's that every startup will go through a point where nobody cares, nobody cares, nobody cares, and it'll catch. So for me, it hasn't catched in a way the full hockey stick to be driving millions of pounds in revenue. But just in terms of general interest and customer feedback, and the more you learn about your customer, exactly what you said, your typical that um, a lot of people will have the textbook, work through it in their own time, and then do the day job, which is perfect. That's exactly what I wanted to do. Because in theory, you can imagine if I sold a million courses, I don't want a million people on every call because it'd be a nightmare. <laughs> but actually, if you only had 5% of the people on the course or 2% of the people join, so you had a small group of six people and we talked through stuff, that's actually the dream. But I only really learned that and I'm now comfortable with that. So if we had Tuesday's 3 p.m. session had two or three people on it, but that was great because we had a really good conversation. But rather than being demoralized that why there are only two or three people on, you're learning about your customer. And the trick is to know, as long as they know they can come if they want to, that's okay. And it, the, the whole point is it's that kind of learning curve. And then what I also tried to do, which I think is good advice, in my first year, it was about building it and just getting it live and seeing what works and what doesn't work. I'm now at the point where I've kind of done the hard work. I've got the studio, I've got the text box, I've got the stuff. And now it's actually about uh, the marketing, the feedback the, and accelerating and telling people. But I still don't expect it to make any money for like another year and a half, two years. And it might do. But I think, again, a lot of people expect to make money straight away and you shouldn't. It's that balance. But again, that's where you want to balance your incomes through different ways. So I still get 99% of my money from a consultancy. But actually that funds the dream. Uh, and I've gone that route as opposed to raising money from someone else, which is just for control and everything else.